This is Join Us in France, episode 299. Oh. Bonjour, I'm Annie Sargent, and today I bring you a trip report with Rick McGurk about his five favorite chateaus in the Loire Valley. We all know that France has a lot of amazing chateaus, but as a Toulousain, I have to admit that most of the most impressive chateaus in France are along the Loire Valley. I wish they were all around Toulouse so I could go there quickly whenever I feel like it, but no. The trouble is, there are so many chateaus along the Loire Valley that it's hard to know which ones to go to and which ones to skip. That's why I've released seven episodes where we talk about this part of France, because it's pretty big and there's a lot to know. Thank you, patrons, for giving me a precious gift, the time to produce this podcast. Your monthly gift makes it all possible, and in these times of uncertainty, I must, that's the least I can say, uh, and anxiety, I can't tell you how much it means to me. There will be a shout out to new patrons and more info on how to join all my wonderful patrons after the interview. Check out my audio self-guided tours on joinusinfrance.com forward slash audio tours. As I record this, I have four of them for Paris and I will release more as time goes by because I love the freedom and depth that these tours provide. Show notes for this episode are on joinusinfrance.com forward slash 299, where you can see a recap of what we have discussed. Follow Addicted to France on Instagram to see Rick's wonderful photos uh, of his favorite chateaus in the Loire Valley. They are absolutely stunning because Rick owns a great camera body, which we briefly discussed in the episode, and he has a keen eye for great photography. I'll post them this week on the Addicted to France Instagram account. Next week, I'll be sending out the newsletter with my recipe of ratatouille, complete with instructions, photos, and snide remarks. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) Also, I want to let you know that I'm trying a new email provider for the newsletter. So if you don't see it, search for it in your inbox. You're looking for an email sent by Annie at joinusinfrance.com. And if you open it and respond, the email gods will know that you want to hear from me and they will stop hiding it. I definitely do not want to email anyone who doesn't wish to hear from me. But if you do, let's make sure you get you get it. You get the the recipe when you want it. If you'd like to subscribe to the newsletter, go to joinusinfrance.com and look for the green button that says extras. Bonjour, Rick, and welcome to join us in France. Bonjour, Annie. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, it's nice to have you. And today we're talking about your visit to the Loire Valley, and you saw a bunch of chateaus, including a couple I haven't been to. So that's very exciting. Tell Always me. a great time. So. Yeah. Tell us when your visit took place and who you were with. So we went in October 2019, and it was my wife and I. Well, we're both 54, and uh, it was our fifth time visiting France, but our first time in the Loire Valley. Oh, wow. That's, that's a lot of visits to France. Do you have family here or something? No, no. Um, two of the times were actually to visit our sons who were doing study abroad programs in Paris. And so we, uh-huh. uh, we encouraged them to do that to um, help them get their uh, kind of a dual major in college with French and, and bio. And so, but it was it had the added benefit of giving us the uh, you know kind of the excuse to visit Paris again. Sure. And so this time also you spent a, a little bit of time in Paris, but we're gonna skip over that. Uh, was there anything outstanding that you want to tell us about in Paris? 
No, I mean, Paris is wonderful. We've, we've done it every time we've been to France and uh, we spent five nights there. But, um, you what? know, we did, the sta- we did the standard stuff, frankly. What's your, what's your favorite neighborhood to stay in in Paris? The sixth, without a doubt. We uh-huh. love um, we love Luxembourg Gardens. We love the the neighborhood around there. Yeah. And there's plenty of cafes and things to do, and it's very centrally located because we like to walk. Cool, excellent. All right. So, how did you get to the Loire Valley? So we took an Uber from our hotel to Montparnasse train station, and then took the TGV to tour. Actually, um, it's a, the Gare de Saint Pierre de Cor, which is I think one stop short of tour because that's where the uh, the Hertz rental car place was. Ah. And so we took the train to tour very easy even for the two of us who speak very little French. I mean beyond bonjour and uh, au revoir and you know craft dough we we are uh, we're we're English through and through. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, you know the train station is easy to navigate and the trains are fast and comfortable and and you know if you've taken a train anywhere it's the same. Yeah. Very easy. Yep. Um, so we get we get to tour, rented a car at Hertz, and uh, again, an, an easy process. The car was there. We just kind of picked it up, got in, and off we went. Yeah, so did you, um, had you ordered a car in advance? Abs- absolutely. You don't, you know, I, I would never not do that. And, yeah. and this time, as opposed to other times when we rented cars in Europe, we reserved an automatic as opposed to a standard. Ah, yes. Which which allowed my wife to drive as well. And in fact, she did uh, all of the driving this time because I, I had done all of the driving when we drove around Tuscany because we had a, a standard. <laughs> ah, yes. Yes. Very good. Okay. So um, you got your car and you went to where? So the first, uh, the first area we went to, we, we, t- we drove from Tours to Chateau de Landry. And that was about a 30-minute trip. And you're going to hear that over and over again here. Everything in the Loire Valley is pretty close together. Mm-hmm. So, you know, 30, 45 minutes at most driving time. Um, and, and, you know, and a comment about that, it's not just the destination. The journey is really cool, too. Right? Yeah. You, you drive through these, these quaint little villages and, and you know, scenic countryside and, and um, you know, important to, you know, not necessarily stop and smell the roses, but at least keep your eyes open and and you know, look out, look out the window as you go from place to place. Yeah. And so um, where did you stay? Did you, did you book a hotel in Tours? No, no. We stayed in two different places. We stayed in Chenon for two nights and we stayed in Ambois for two nights. Ah, okay. Um, just as between the two, we liked Ambois better than Chenon. Mm. Chenon was a little bit smaller and um, quite honestly, it just seemed Older and a little bit more run down is not the right word, but just um, just smaller and, and, and less of it, less to do available. There, okay, frankly. okay, okay. Um, but uh, I'll, get, I'll get to that. The okay. hotels we stayed in because both of them were really, really. Okay. Um, you know, I would recommend them. Yep. Um, so the first place we went to, as I said, was the Laundry, and uh, it is beautiful. You know, the the chateau itself is um, very, you know. Uh, Kind of as and as the first one, you know, it was kind of really cool to, to tour a chateau. Mm-hmm. But the real the real highlight of the trip are the grounds. The formal gardens are just spectacular. They, yeah. you know, they're they're manicured. They're, um, you know, there's we were there in, in October, and so it was the fall. But even then, you know, the flowers were in bloom. Uh, the fruit trees were, you know, full of like the pear trees were full of pears and. Mm-hmm. Um, just really, really very pretty grounds. Yeah, and it's a beautiful Both, French garden style. Yes, and and not just and, and in addition to just those formal gardens, kind of behind those gardens, there are additional, you know, walking paths and with some you know kind of quirky sculptures back there and and grape arbors and it's just a really nice a nice set of grounds. And so mm-hmm. I, I definitely. You know, plan time if you go there to, to uh, explore the grounds in, in addition to just the chateau because that was really, right. really very nice. Right. But it also depends on what time of year you go. Obviously, the chateau is <laughs> – I assume the chateau is open year-round, although maybe I shouldn't say that because – but uh, if it's open year-round, you know, it's not going to be the same in January and February. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, a comment on that generally, I mean, I think that being there in October certainly trimmed down the crowds. We were not there in high tourist season. 
And so, you know, the laundry in particular was virtually empty. Mm. Uh, we had we had the place just about to ourselves. Wow. And, you know, I could I could take pictures of the grounds and the only people who were in the pictures were the workers. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it was uh, and, and there are a ton of them. I mean, they are constantly working on, you know, on the, the hedges and sculpting the plants and, and all of that. So it's really a, a, a beautiful set of grounds. So is Villandry a, a furnished chateau? It is furnished uh, more, you know, more so than some, but the interior is not, uh, isn't really a highlight. It's more the views you get from the various windows or porches or, or kind of covered passageways that you could see the ground. It's really, that's, that's really more the star of the show here than, than the chateau itself, I'd say. Wonderful. Okay. So Villandry definitely recommend, especially the gardens. Uh, oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so from there we drove, and again, 15, 20 minutes only, to Azé le Rideau, if mm -hmm. I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah, yeah, Azé le Rideau, um, yeah. So that that's nicer inside than Valandry. There's more furniture. There's more, um, you know, rooms that that kind of make a nice impression. Um, but the grounds are not quite as impressive. Uh, mm. it, it is kind of the sh one of the chateau that's built on a little island inside a little lake. I don't know if it's man-made or natural, but it, it has that kind of appeal. So there is some, you know, some great, you know, scenery in that regard. Uh -huh. uh, you can, you know, you can kind of take a nice picture of the chateau uh, with the lake surrounding it, the moat surrounding it. So that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And you took um, some I, fabulous photos. I got to say, I'm very impressed. Thank you so much <laughs> for sending me those photos. <laughs> oh, no problem. No now I'm going to have to upgrade it's, my Canon body. <laughs> uh, it, you know, it, it is one of those hobbies where you can uh, you can sink a lot of a lot of spare money into. Yes, you could. So, uh, <laughs> and I have. That's what I tell um, my my husband is I I don't ask for jewelry just just cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's more important the lenses than the camera, right? Yes, yeah. Oh, but I already have all the good lenses. I, now it's my body that's kind of old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's the thing with electronics. Yeah. <laughs> so, so from there, uh, we we drove to our first uh, hotel for the evening, which was Shannon. And again, you know, just a thirty-minute drive there. We stayed in a place called the Hotel Diderot, mm -hmm. which is kind of on the outskirts of the town, but the town is a you know, 15, 20 minute walk from, from start to finish. So the outskirts of town is not really a, a, a relevant consideration. It's not so far, yeah. <laughs> exactly. The hotel was very quaint. It was um, kind of a real French manor style with uh, beautiful furniture. Um, and, you know, I'm no expert. I don't know if it was antique or, or faux antique, but it was really nice mm -hmm. and very period, you know, very period. Um, there was a, there was an annex you could stay in as well, which was a bit cheaper, but we, we opted for the, for the main manor house. And, and that was, I think the right call. Yeah. So um, did it feel like the, you were the, in a very, very old, like French manor style, meaning very feeling like you had gone back in time, that sort of place? Absolutely, you know, yeah. beams on the ceilings, the the kind of the narrow planked wooden floors, um, you know, all of that, you know, kind of stuff that you're you're kind of looking for in terms of atmosphere, mm -hmm. um, and then like the 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 kind of the common dining area for breakfast in the morning, which was fantastic, by the way, uh, was same thing, you know, low ceiling beams, big fireplace, um, rustic tables. Uh, they make their own jams there, so that, along with the uh, you know fresh bread made for a great start to the day, mm. um, it, it's definitely a place I'd recommend. And to the point where it turns out that while we were there, a Rick Steves tour was staying there as well, ah. and, and that was fine. You know, we didn't interact with them; they didn't bother us. But the, I will say that the hotel and they seemed a little proprietary about the common spaces, and so. Um, you know, oh, you mean they took over of, the world? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, which I guess I shouldn't be surprised at. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan, but, uh, you know, yeah. they, they, they were a little proprietary about the space. Yeah, was it a big um, group? There were probably about 20 people or so. Yeah. Um, so they, you know, they had themselves a, you know, kind of a van and, and a tour guide and, and, you know, all of the trappings of a, of a tour. Yeah. Which, which frankly, I don't, I don't really think you need to do the Loire Valley. I think, you know, a, a little bit of research and, 
and you know, kind of listening to podcast episodes like yours will, you know, will get you ninety nine percent of the way there. Yeah. Um, and and most of the chateau that you go to have a bit of historical, you know, signage around to give you a sense of of what's going on there. Right. Um, so as I mentioned, the town of Chenon was was quite small. And um, on the first day there, we, we made a critical uh, feeding error. I need to, you know, I like my meals regular and often. Um, <laughs> and we kind of missed lunch. And so we got to the hotel around 2.30 or so and figured we'd just find something in town just to snack on between, you know, then and dinner. And the place was closed. Mm. The entire town was dead. Yeah. And I don't know if that's the time of year we were there or that's just French countryside living. Yeah, but, it's French um, countryside. It's very unusual to have stuff. Like, was was there a grocery store in Chinon? I, I don't remember <clears throat> Chinon at all. Uh, I, if there was, we did not find it. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, you know, we, w- we walked through pretty much the entire town and, and uh, we ended up, you know, finally found some little kind of corner cafe that was open and, and honestly it was my wife's birthday that day Aww. and we had, we ended up just ordering a little you know a little coffee for her and a uh and a little you know sweet that we ended up you know kind of eating and, and celebrating her birthday that way oh um, you, you yeah you you had to make up for that later right exactly and so <laughs> but, but later in the day when you know the town kind of opened up again we did find uh, a beautiful wine cave that was built into the um, the hill beneath the the Chenon uh, fortress, the the Chateau Chenon, and so that was really neat. Um, and then also uh, at the recommendation of the hotel, we ended up finding um, kind of a, a wine bar, a wine cave hmm. uh, in town, and and that had some you know great local wine selections and uh, some nice charcuterie that we could you know, enjoy a snack before dinner. Yeah, yeah. And the details will be in the show notes, but that one was called La Cabana Vin, which is kind of a cute name. Um, yeah, it, and it was it was a cute place, frankly. Yeah. And the, uh, the proprietor, the, the, uh, the owner-operator was a, was a gregarious guy and, and uh, he spoke fairly good English, so, you know, we could communicate better than if we were left to our own devices. That's good. <laughs> as, uh, as I said, as I said, our French is, you know, rudimentary at best. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's all right. I, I'm glad you found uh, some good places. Yeah. And so th- that was that, that was the first day. The second day we drove to the Abbey Royal de Fontevraud. De Fontevraud, yeah. Saying that right. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, you know, 25-minute drive from Chinon to there. And uh, I say or so because that was the only place that we went to where the parking was not really clearly marked. Every place else you'd drive that's up to true. and they'd be like, park, park here for the chateau. Um, but this one we had to, you know, we had to figure it out a little bit. And, and once we found it, it was, a, it was a sizable parking lot. So it was kind of surprising that there wasn't better signage. Yeah. Um, I had the, the same Abbey, problem. Okay, good. Yeah. Then I don't, I don't feel like a dumb tourist. It <laughs> no. was, it was just not well. It was yeah. not well marked. Abbey is cool. Lot of history. Pretty empty, honestly, and and some of that history is a little bit, you know, disturbing. for For a number of decades, it was a very, uh, very bad prison, mm-hmm. and lots of people died from a variety of illnesses, including the, you know, poor treatment. So, um, yeah. it's not a chateau, but it, it does have some cool scenery. And uh, and as I say, a lot of a lot of history, though some of it is pretty is pretty dark and bleak. Yeah, it has some grand history, and this is also where um, there's a um, gisant of um, Eleanor of Aquitaine, mm-hmm. um, which I you know I enjoyed, but I enjoyed the place. I just but I do see your point that it's some of it is not very happy. <laughs> Yeah, well, and, and you know, look, if if you had only you know one day and you wanted to hit two or three places, it wouldn't be on the top two or three for me. But since we did have four days and, and we actually hit ten different sites, it, it was definitely a sight to see. Yeah. Um, and so from there, we went to Chateau d'Ousey, if I'm saying that correctly. Chateau d'Ousey. D'Ousey. Yeah. Okay. And again, you know, a 30-minute drive, uh, keep saying that, um, but it, it's true. Everything is pretty tightly packed there in the Loire Valley, and 
if you you know use Google Maps or you know a, a kind of an online map in pro driving mapping program, it's it's really simple. Though I, I would strong I would strongly recommend listening to the podcast episode on driving in France, which I did several times. Uh, it's got a lot of great tips, and you know, made me much more comfortable about the the whole notion of kind of getting from place to place. Yeah, yeah. Um, the chateau itself is beautiful, and I and I know I'm I'm sounding a little bit like a broken record with that, but the the building itself is magnificent. They advertise it as one of the models for Disney's Cinderella Castle, mm. and I and I don't know if that's true, but it's certainly got that feel with the spires and the you know the um, kind of the architecture, and uh, it's it's really you know beautiful itself, and it has a, a number of kind of outbuildings that are also very well maintained, like the the um, the chapel is in wonderful condition, and there are stables there that are in great condition, and there are also caves built into the limestone hills that it backs up onto that you can tour, and, you know, there's like a little wine cellar and, you know, stuff like that. So are there horses in the stables or just old stables there, that are empty? There, there were no horses when we were there. I don't know if there are in the summertime, but okay. I, I tend to doubt it because they, they seemed much more kind of like a – Museum piece as opposed to a working stable. Yeah. Okay. Um, from there, we had lunch right across the street. And, uh, you know, the place, um, and it'll be in the show notes, but it's Cafe Deschamin Eric. Nothing fancy, you know, just a plain, plain lunch. It gets dinged a little bit uh, from what I've seen in reviews. But, frankly, it's got a great view of the chateau. And, you know, what are you expecting from a place literally across the street from a tourist attraction? Right. Um, you know. <laughs> If you just look and have a bite to eat and have a great view, it, it's perfect. And um, the weather that day was a little bit bleak. And honestly, it, it was perfect for us because it had a covered patio when the thunderstorm started. Ah, so yes, yes. Um, it worked great for us. Yeah, I think there are a lot of people who have unrealistic expectations. They're going to a what I'd consider a quick lunch place and they expect, a, right. you know, fine dining. Well, you're not going to find, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just not that. <laughs> no, I mean, so. I, I had a, you know, chicken, chicken on a, on a baguette and it was, it was fine. You know, I, mean, yeah. what, I don't know what people are expecting. Yeah. So, so, so from there it was back to Chinon and, um, we toured around the Royal Chateau of Chinon and that's, you know, I think Chateau for that one and for the Ambois one is a little bit misleading because they're more hilltop fortresses. Yeah. And both of them are royal chateaus, meaning that the king stayed in them for extended periods of time, and thus the fortifications. You know, it was it was a time in France when it was not completely united, and uh, and there was a you know the occasional battle, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you want you wanted to have walls and you know kind of a, a narrow access points and the like to for protection purposes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the Chenon one has great views of the of the town of Chenon. It's got a number of buildings that you can tour through, including you know the kind of the guard tower and the main chateau itself. Um, so I really I really enjoyed that one and uh, and the Ambois one perhaps even more. But um, those are I I I, I kind of looked at them as must dos. Yeah. But. Um, Honestly, I think my wife might disagree with those, uh, and, and maybe it's just I, I enjoy kind of the military history aspect of them. But I thought they were both very, you know, very cool, and the and the views from the top were, were um, you know, kind of very, right. you know, kind of kind of a nice look. So, so your wife might say Chateau Chinon, eh, too military, and Amboise as well, right? Yeah, although Amboise is a little bit less military right. than Chinon, in my view, it's it's much more, and, and it's got much more interior stuff available to uh, uh, to tour, and much more kind of history laid out for you inside there. So I think I think Amboise uh, was was one that she would definitely see us. Yeah, so Chinon, I think, you know, if we if we had a top five, it wouldn't make her top five. Um, it yeah. probably, you know, it and Villandre would be in my top five, you know, kind of fighting for the last spot in my top five. Okay. All right. So then from there, uh, it was back to kind of the hotel and uh, and dinner in Chinon. And, I, and I, I, I kind of won't comment on dinner that, that night in Chinon, although. No, you just, should. I, oh, okay. All yeah, right. well, you should. You didn't ate, like the, it. The place, yeah, the place we ate at was called uh, Au Chapeau Rouge, so Red Hat. 
Um, and it gets, you know, great reviews on all of the sites. And we made a reservation and we showed up at the time for our reservation. And uh, it was one of the worst eating experiences I've had in five trips to France. Mm. And, and that includes, you know, you know, times when we had our kids and they were a little bit younger and a little bit less, you know, kind of love haven than they were when they were older. Um, the The people there were not particularly, you know, friendly and we were made to feel kind of unwelcome, mm. honestly. And, and that That's was terrible. disappointing for a place, yeah, for a place that got such good reviews. The food was just mediocre and, and it was not cheap as compared to most of the other places we ate. So, so yeah. all in, not something, uh, someplace I could go again. Yeah. This is a problem that I have with most guidebooks is that they all recommend the same places and if these places know they're going to fill up every day, no matter what, then yep. they don't have to work on anything. <laughs> so and, and that's exactly and that's exactly the attitude we had. It was you know it wasn't just you know in you know I, I find and you you've said it multiple times on podcasts which I've listened to all of them by the way wow. um, that it, it you know French waiters will generally leave you alone yeah to, to just do what you do um, and that's not a that's not a sign of discourtesy or disrespect it's just kind of the way it is and the way people want it to be. But that wasn't that wasn't it. I mean, it was affirmative, like you know, being treated poorly. And I just I just didn't understand it because we're not, you know, we're not aggressive or demanding or you know. Yeah, it could have been bad, simply bad that customers. the boss was being a pain that day, or somebody was having a good bad yeah. day, or something. But yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Um, okay, so that was the second night, and then I just did want to comment before I leave Shannon that the next day, which I think was a Thursday, that it was market day. And so the town, you know, square area had a nice little market that we toured and, you know, friendly people, some of whom, frankly, I think we're speaking Polish as opposed to French. Oh. Um, but, uh, but, you know, uh, produce and bread and, and you know, clothing and, and just all, all stuff at the market that was, you know, was fun to tour. Hmm. Cool. Um, How big so of a from- city is Chinon? It's not big. As okay. I said, I think you could walk across the entire thing in about 15 minutes. Okay. Um, so maybe 5,000 people, but, maybe. It, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe. And, and uh, um, not the very few kind of multiple people dwellings. I mean, it's, it's mainly houses and, and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I have been, but it's been okay. so long I don't remember that one. Yeah, and, and I think I think I've already said this, but if I had to pick between Amboise and Chinon, I would definitely pick Amboise. It had it had more to do. It seemed a little bit more well maintained, mm-hmm. um, and you know, kind of more more eating options, and uh, and even to the point where it had a little you know a little open drugstore uh, in town where you mm-hmm. could get stuff if you needed it. So, you know, it was it, it definitely was more accommodating to to the traveler. Very good to know. So from from Chenonceau, we drove to Ambois to check into our hotel. Again, you know, broken record, but about a 20-minute drive. The <laughs> hotel we stayed at was uh, Hotel Le Manoir Les Minimes, if I'm saying that right. Hotel Le um, Manoir Les Minimes. Yeah, there we go. Uh, again, I would strongly recommend the hotel. Um, as, as with the hotel we stayed at in Chenon, it was um, kind of a medium-sized boutique, boutique hotel with a, with a great breakfast. Uh, the staff was really helpful and kind, and I'll, and I'll comment on that a little bit at the end, um, not to be a downer uh, right now. But <laughs> So the place was in really an old manor house that they had redone, and the rooms were kind of a mix of modern amenities, like, you know, large modern bathrooms and spacious, you know, spacious rooms, but with, you know, kind of beam ceilings and and kind of, you know, cool roof lines and, and, uh, and the like. So it was really, it was really a nice place. Nice. And, and again, not a particularly expensive place. I don't know if that's because it was October and, and we were in the off season, but, you know, reasonably priced hotel. Mm-hmm. Very good. Um, and, and, you know, great location overlooking the Loire River and a uh, quick walk to the town center. Um, you, have to, you have to literally walk by, by the base of the Royal Chateau of Vimbois. Um, so, so a great, you know, a great, a great view mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Um, so from there, after checking in, we walked over to Le Clos Lucy, uh, about a 15 minute walk. And that's the chateau that Leonardo da Vinci spent the last years of his life. Yep. Um, after being invited by the King of France to come and, uh, kind of be the, the resident, uh, genius. 
Yeah. Um, it, it's not as large a chateau as many of the others. Cool. Um, and that just means it's not kind of massive. Land. But uh, it has expansive grounds. Yeah. And on those grounds, they have installed many of da Vinci's works, kind of models, working models. Right. And so it's a really it's a really neat place, I think, to bring children or, you know, kind of school age kids. And, and there was actually it was clearly a, a kind of a school um, outing was there while we were there. And so yeah. it's kind of, kind of neat to see the kids run, running around and playing with the various Da Vinci displays. Yeah. Yeah. We went when my daughter um, was maybe 12 or something. So it was a long time ago, but it, it, she loved it. Yeah. We loved having her there and we got her a book about Da Vinci and coloring things sure. and whatever, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. No. And, and that, that one had probably the best gift shop that I, uh, that we went to. Yeah. Um, Surprisingly enough, but a lot of you know, obviously not surprisingly, a lot of Da Vinci themed stuff, um, which was which was nice, and uh, uh, so we, we we did that, and and after that we went to back into Amboise, just kind of walked back there on our way to the the Royal Chateau of Amboise. We ate at a, an Italian um, restaurant called Via Roma. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just across the street from the entrance to the Royal Chateau, which is you know you kind of have to go up a, um, a ramp and some steps. But it was nice to have a little change of pace uh, in terms of food choices. So, you know, I think I had uh, lasagna and my wife had a pizza. Cool. Uh, food was v- very good there. I definitely recommend that as, as a lunch or probably as a dinner place. And um, plenty of locals in there. You could tell by, you know, kind of the men in business suits having having lunch with a glass of wine and, and you know, uh, Clearly, um, clearly not tourists. Yeah. So I and I and, and I typically take that as a good sign of a you know a good place to eat. Of course, of course, yeah. Um, and so from, after lunch, we went up the the hill to the Royal Chateau de Bois again, um, as much a fortress, although a little bit less kind of military style than Chinon. Um, the views from there up there were just outstanding, and yeah. the the architecture was great. There was more to see and do on the inside. It was it was more well preserved and accessible than the Chanon one was. Mm-hmm. So that was um, you know that was a great uh, that was a great tour, and I'd, I'd strongly recommend that one because you get you get kind of the great views and the um, kind of the cool chateau, and there's there's decent enough grounds with kind of a wine you know the, with a vineyard in the background, and yeah. uh, it's it's not. It's not particularly large because it, it's um, you know kind of limited by its hilltop location, but that well worth kind of doing. And especially you know kind of it's the thing you do maybe before dinner if you're staying in Amboise. Yeah, um, yeah. Kind and of like kind it, of like we did. One of the photos you sent me that is just outstanding is this gargoyle. Uh, it's a black and white <laughs> photo with uh, with uh, just the teeth on the gargoyle and the and a beautiful dramatic sky. I love it. I love it. <laughs> So, yeah. uh, to, to so see... I, will, I will tell you, my, yeah. my wife and I, I reviewed the photos that I was going to submit my, with my wife, and she's like, why do you want to put that in? That's that's just a gargoyle. I'm oh, like, I love it's it. Cool. <laughs> it's a cool photo, yeah. Um, and everybody, if you want to see all of these photos that people submit, uh, you have to follow Join Us in France on social media, because I can't put them all on the website, or the, the website would be, a, you know, it would take forever to open a page. So it's a lot of fun. It's, as I said to you before we got on, it's one of my hobbies and I, I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so then uh, dinner that night um, and both nights in Amboise, we had we had made reservations at, you know, kind of recommended places. And uh, we skipped them both and ended up eating at a at a bistro called Chez Bruno. Mm. And um, uh, I can't say enough good things. Obviously, we went back there twice and that was oh, over wow. – kind of a Michelin starred restaurant. Uh, I think it was called Chateau de Pre that has a great reputation, but you know, it was something we would have to drive to. And, and, you know, I took to heart kind of the comments on your, uh, your driving episode that, uh, driving after having had a couple of glasses of wine is a, is an absolute no, you know, no. thing to avoid. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, the Chet, the Chez Bruno was a short walk. It was, um, Clearly a family-owned place and, uh, you know, friendly people. Food was great. Great wine selection. Um, you know, atmosphere was, was super. Uh, it just oh, everything about it was great. And, uh, and that's obviously why we went back again the second night. 
Um, <laughs> but definitely make reservations because uh, the first night we lucked out. We didn't have reservations, but we got there literally when it opened and we were able to get a, a table. Um, but it filled up immediately. Okay. And the second night we, we did have reservations, but again, it was it was packed to the gills. That's, so, that's, so, that's also a very good sign. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was it was great. Food was great. Everything was And you know, if on. you see a restaurant that's called La Table de Blah Blah Blah, usually these are really good. I don't know why, but people <laughs> who call their restaurant La Table de whatever, whoever, they just put a lot of heart into their into their restaurants. And it might be a little different than what you normally see in France, but they're usually very good, so yeah, no, I, I had the special both nights um, and it was different, you know, different things and not, you know, kind of not normal like Coco Vin or, you know, something, you know, kind of classic that you'd, you'd think of if you go to a French restaurant. But it was just, you know, food was fantastic. Yeah. It was well done. It was, you know, prepared just really well. Right. Um, OK, so that was that was our, our, our first and second night's dinner in, in Anbois. But let me you know kind of get back to uh, the Chateau. Mm -hmm. Um, the next morning, we went to Cheverny, and uh, that was probably our longest drive. It was about 45 minutes. Uh -huh. But again, you know, the, the drive um, from point A to point B is just, um, it's part of the experience. It's, you know, you pass through, and I think uh, you and Elise did a kind of a driving tour of Loire. Yeah, it's pretty. And, and it, right, it's pretty. I mean, these towns are all just incredibly pretty and quaint. And, and honestly, the, the time of year we were there, they were a little slower and so there wasn't much activity. So they, um, but they're just they're just gorgeous little towns. And so the drive is part of the fun. Mm -hmm. um, so Chevrolet is an interesting chateau in many ways. It's it's got a fantastic look to it. I mean, it's just the classic manor house. Um, but it's got a great story. And and I don't know if this is a hundred percent true or not. But uh, according to the story. Um, during the French Revolution, many of the chateaux were looted of their, you know, furniture and artworks and things of that nature, um, just because that's what happened during the French Revolution. And uh, and apparently, Chevigny was spared because its owners at the time and the current owners still um, were very good to their uh, to the surrounding, you know, townsfolk. So mm. they were spared that kind of deprivation. Mm. Um, but whatever whatever the reason, uh, it, it is a beautiful inside, and um, you know they, they they let you tour the first floor because the family that owns it still occupies the second and third floors. Wow! And and I don't know if they I, I doubt they occupy it full time, but they're there regularly from what I, from what I was able to understand. That's so cool. But the furniture them. the furniture is really cool. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a great little tour. That was the most crowded tour I think we did of the, of the interior because it, it is packed with stuff and you, you kind of have to walk through the path as opposed to just being able to wander around the room at will. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but definitely a, a must do, um, that, that, it, it, you know, that, that chateau. And the other thing about that chateau is while it doesn't have, you know, kind of the high end formal gardens that some do. You know, it has nice grounds. Don't get me wrong. You know, far better than my backyard. <laughs> but, <laughs> or mine. <laughs> but you know, not the manicured Villandry or or uh, Chen and So. But yeah. what it does have is um, a dogs. Lots and lots of dogs. Right. They have the hunting um, the dogs. The owner is exactly. And feeding time at the kennel is a must do. You know, plan <laughs> plan your trip there around that because the kennel master you know, kind of organizes the dogs and, and is able to, and there are probably 50 or 60 dogs, right? This is not just two or three dogs. Wow. Um, I and, can't and imagine. They're, you know, they're, yeah, no, no. they're hot and heavy to eat and they're sitting there as, as good as, you know, large hunting dogs, I imagine, can be while he fills up the troughs with the steaming food and they're sitting there chomping at the bit and, you know, he kind of organizes them and then he'll give them the signal and they just fall on the food and it's just a feeding frenzy, frankly. But it's a great it's a great thing to watch. And uh, it definitely, a, a, you know, a should do if you're going to go um, do the tour of the chateau. And, and Chiverny, as I say, is is a beautiful chateau just in and of itself. And the dogs just make it kind of cool. And, yeah. and for for children, for children, I can imagine that would be, you know, a really cool thing as well. 
And if you're Tintin but, uh, fan, they in it, Tintin there's there's a there's a chateau, and it's it's that's the one they modeled their chateau after. Right, right, and and uh, but one thing definitely, if you're going to go with the feeding time know when the feeding time is and get there 10 or 15 minutes before it's going to start because people start to crowd up along the fences. And unless you're tall, uh, you may, you know, kind of just be looking between people's shoulders. So just try (laughs) and get there a little early, you know, get up against the fence and, uh, you know, just, just kind of be patient for a few minutes while the, the, you know, the the magic happens. Well, and also setting up to feed that many dogs, that's got to be interesting to watch. Oh, it is. No, absolutely. That's that's part of the show because, you know, you get the dogs out of the kennel building and they, they're kind of running around and he's, you know, kind of herding them into into kind of a stationary spot. And then he fills up the trough with food and then, you know, he gives them a few commands and they, you know, they kind of do what they're supposed to do. And then and then, he you know, it's a it's probably about a 20, 30 minute you know, process. Yeah. So it's not just, you know, kind of throw the food in the bowl and watch the watch the dogs go at it. It's a whole big show Mm -hmm. and it's meant to be, you know, it's clearly meant to be, you know, kind of part of the experience. Wonderful. Um, And so there, from there, we drove to uh, Chambord and um, we saved the best for last. Right. That's the last one we're going to talk about, but that's an amazing chateau. Yeah. Chambord is, um, it's incredible. It's spectacular, borderline, just unbelievable. Um, it's like a big wedding cake stuck in the middle of a field. Uh, you know, it's white and it's towering and it's it's just enormous. It's it's kind of uh, on the scale of Versailles in many ways. Yeah. But I, I yeah, I, but I, it's, I, I, it's well, wider. It's like, yeah, visually it's different than Versailles, but it's yeah, oh, yeah. oh it's very different than Versailles, but kind of that kind of grandeur. Yeah. In terms of the building. Um, I, I frankly like it much better than Versailles. I've been to Versailles twice, and both times I was uh, disappointed. And I, I, I'm sure I went at the wrong time and did the wrong thing, but the crowds and the, the, the place was disappointing. The garden's far better, the interior of Versailles didn't love. But um, sh- talk about Chambord, it, there are tons of rooms open for touring. Yeah. And it's just on a scale that's completely different than any other of the chateau. It's, it, the rooms are enormous. Um, they can be pretty stark because many of them are virtually unfurnished. Yeah. And that, that may be the result of kind of the history of it in that it was built, um, back in, you know, I think the 1300s, 1300s, 1400s, but never really occupied for extended periods of time. Mm-hmm. It was just a, you know, kind of, it was a fancy hunting lodge for the king. And I think he was there all of about two weeks during his lifetime, and then it was passed around to a variety of kind of favorites of, of the royalty, but um, it was just a it was a it was difficult to maintain, expensive to heat, and um, I, I think it just never never really got lived in the way it, you know it would need to be to you know um, you know kind of get the furnishings that you'd want. Uh, one of the cool sites there is a, this double helix staircase that yeah. that rumor has it was designed by Da Vinci. And it's one of the signature sites and, you know, kind of a must do. It's impressive. Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. And again, the the scale of it is just overwhelming. And Um, you can walk around on top and you can climb stairs. You can go every which way. (laughs) It's it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And the views from the top are are literally endless. The grounds are um, enormous. And, uh, you know, it was obviously a hunting preserve because there are woods you know, there's, there's huge fields and, and they're arranged, you know, very nicely. And then there's kind of woods surrounding it. And it's really a, it's, you know, it's really a must do. Um, there's a food court there that we ate lunch in again, you know, nothing <laughs> that was more like, you know, French fast food as it were. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, if, if, if it's, if it's feeding time and, you know, you want to grab, grab a quick bite before you tour the grounds, uh, definitely a, a to do. <laughs> With the infamous French tacos, which are really yeah, hot pockets. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't quite that bad, or at least what we had wasn't quite that bad. But okay. it was, you know, it was just, it was just to eat. It was not to enjoy yeah. necessarily. Um, so, so that you know, kind of that's my tour chateau. I, I did want to say one last thing, um, and I'll give you my top five if you want. Yes, I do. I want that. Um, so, uh, if I had to run the top five, it would be Chambord, Cherbourg, Chenonceau, Amboise, and Villandry. 
Uh-huh. I debated between Volandri and Shannon, but I guess Volandri got the got the nod in the fifth spot because of the uh, just the incredible gardens, which I yeah. can imagine in spring and early summer are just. I mean, they were they were magnificent when we were there in early fall, but in in spring and summer, I can imagine they just really just to die for. So you're making everybody's life easy. You're telling them exactly where they need to go. How many days would you say is ideal to spend in the Loire Valley? I think you could do all all of that in two days if you really went to it, but I would suggest three because, like I said, if you went to Shenso, I would slow down a little bit, have lunch there, and, you know, really, you know, kind of enjoy that whole experience a little bit more. We did a little bit we rushed a little bit. We did pl- 10 places in four days, and, and probably that was one or two too many places. Um, and so I'd, I'd probably cut down a couple of them. But, you know, it's probably the only time we're going to be in the Lower Valley. And so, um, you know, we wanted to hit as many of the places as we could. Yeah. Uh, um, just let me – I mentioned earlier, too, about our, our hotel in Amboise. And I did, I did want to comment um, about that again because – we found out the last night that we were in Amboise that my, uh, Suzanne and my wife's mom passed away. Mm. Um, she had had Alzheimer's for a number of years and was in a home. Um, and it was late at night and we, we kind of, we felt like we needed to take a walk to clear our heads. And we came down the stairs and the concierge was just kind of wrapping up, I think for the day. And, and we kind of told him where we were and what we were doing. And he was like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. And, and we left. And when we came back, um, he had left a note under our door that was just beautifully written and, uh, you know, very kind and, and thoughtful and sensitive. And for such a young guy, I think he was probably in his 20s, if I had to guess, it was just a really a sensitive and kind thing to do and, and just gave us, you know, again, kind of a warm feeling about that place that I, I couldn't lovely. recommend that place, that place enough. So it, it was, uh, you know, a great place to go. That's wonderful. The, the old, the only wrinkle, and just to move beyond that now, the only wrinkle I'll give you about the travel back was that when we went to drop off the car, it was a Sunday, and the Hertz location was closed. Ooh. And we knew that coming in, and, and the, the folks at Hertz had told us, well, just you know, drop off the keys at the, the, the hotel that was pretty much right next door to the train station as well, and tell them where the car is, and, and that'll be fine. And the problem was that when we got to the train station, there was not a single spot at the parking lot of the train station. And there was not a single spot within about a quarter mile of the train station. Mm. And, and so we found a spot, but we couldn't tell if it was legal then or if it would be legal, you know, for the next 24 hours while we want, you know, we left the car there for Hertz to collect. Yeah. Um, and so we drove around a little bit more and, and then a train pulled in and, People got off the train, got in their cars and left, and a few spots opened up. So I guess that's my only comment is if you get to a spot and, and there's no – they're at the train station and no, there are no spots, wait until a train arrives and some spots will probably open up. Yeah. But that you know that kind of made us a little bit nervous. Because yeah, it would we be. Yeah. It would we're be plenty bad. of time, time for a train. We were just concerned about – you know, kind of the parking issue, but mm-hmm. um, it worked out, and and the train, the travel back to Paris was, you know, quick and easy, and and just fantastic. Although, you know, the end of the trip had a little bit of a damper put on it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you had, you had some worries on your mind at that point. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Rick. That was really lovely. Thank you for uh, your, your detailed show notes, which uh, if you go to the show page, you'll find a, a button that says guest notes. Click on that. You'll see everything he wrote, all the details of everywhere he went. And um, yeah, that sounds like you had a, a fantastic trip other than the sad news that you got at the end. Yeah, it was a fantastic trip. We had a great time. We really enjoyed the Loire Valley. It is, it is not, you know, this not, it's not a nightlife place. You, you know, you're not looking for that. You're looking for scenery and, and the chateau themselves. And, um, and, and if that's what you're looking for, the Loire Valley is, is a, you know, yeah. great thing to do. Yeah, because a lot of these chateaus are in fairly rural parts of France. Um, I mean, not, not necessarily, but mo- many of them are. Oh, absolutely. They're, yeah. they're out, you know, kind of 20 minutes from a small town, which is, you know, you, you know, you're driving literally through farm fields for most of your trip. All right. Merci, Rick. Merci, Annie. Au revoir. Au revoir.
Again, I want to thank my patrons for supporting the show and giving back. Patrons get several exclusive rewards for doing so. You can see them at patreon.com forward slash join us. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, join us. No spaces or dashes. Thank you, all of you who support the show. Some of you have been doing it for many years and you are fantastic. And a shout out this week to new patrons, Jenny Burnell, Brooklyn Copeland, and Sydney Lambert. Thank you so much for becoming patrons and making this podcast possible. I released a new Patreon reward this week where Elise and I chat about what it's like vacationing in France under COVID-19. These are strange times we are living in, but we're adjusting and we talk about the mechanics kind of of all of that. I'm still working on a series of tips for driving in France for patrons. Next up, the difficult roundabouts with strange markings on them and some of them with lights and stuff like that. I will explain. Another way to support this podcast is to hire me to be your itinerary consultant. And I know maybe you're not quite ready to come, but soon it'll happen. That will only cost you 50 bucks, but you get a custom itinerary that will fit your needs and will save you a lot of time. Plus, you get the input of an actual local. So how about that? Email Annie at joinusinfrance.com to set that up and write itinerary review in the subject line. And if you'd like to support the show without spending a penny you wouldn't have otherwise, before you go shopping on Amazon, go to the bottom of any page on joinusinfrance.com and click on the Amazon ad. Because you went to Amazon through my site, it will give me a small little bit of that purchase price, it's commission, and it doesn't cost you a penny more. So whether you pay the commission or not, you pay the same. And uh, quite a few people are remembering to do that. It's enough to cover the costs of uh, running this podcast, which I appreciate very much. For my personal update this week, I have been writing a lot. But alas, I'm not ready to uh, talk very much more about that yet. So you'll have to wait. But seriously, you know, uh, five hours of writing these days every day. So I wake up early, I walk the dogs, I water the plants because it's super hot still. I mean, it's late August, you know. Uh, I do a bit of shopping sometimes. Well, not shopping. I mean, like I pick up <laughs> at the grocery store. Sometimes I'm cleaning because, you know, I have dogs. It gets messy. Uh, then I write, I write, I write. And it's fun. I, honestly, it is fun. Um, this week, I also listened to a, a really nice book while I was walking the dogs, Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. It was done by a group of English actors with sound effects and everything. It was really it's a great story. It was told well. It was wonderful. I love classics. I mean, honestly, that's me. Um, next week, I'll start on Don Quixote. Don Quixote. Again, I've listened to it once or twice, but it's a big book. I, I need to listen again. And this time I'll follow along with my Kindle uh, because sometimes, since English is, an, is not my native tongue, sometimes I need to see the words as well as hear them. And I've got a lot of new merchandise on the website that looks pretty great. If you ask me, you should check it out. Uh, link to it on joinusinfrance.com forward slash merch. You'll find mugs, scarves, masks, <sighs> boo, <laughs> but, but I do wear them, uh, clocks, t-shirts, hoodies, a couple of puzzles made from my own photos, an apron. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff that I think fans will enjoy, uh, notebooks, uh, you know, next time you come to France, you'll need a notebook, right? Uh, I'll be adding some funny stuff in French in there soon too. Swiffer, the dog that I told you about in the last two episodes, he's back to his original family for the time being, because my friend who is hanging in and doing okay with her chemotherapy, all things considered, she got some more help, so that's wonderful, but he may come back in early September when her kids go back to college. We'll see how things develop. Uh, I've decided that I can walk three dogs. I still can't pet three dogs at once because I don't have a third arm, but maybe I can rub one with a foot or something. Those of you that have more than one dog, have you noticed how as soon as you pet one dog, the other one comes running? 
Well, that's how it works at my house as well. <laughs> and brushing is also such a joy. The Labradoodle OP loves to be brushed and runs over as soon as she sees me picking up the box with the brushing stuff. The miniature poodle Gus, he hates to be brushed. He has issues, that one. But I need to brush him because he's a poodle. You got to brush poodles. Uh, but he, he, you know, he still wants me to fuss over him. So he's standing there. But if I start brushing him, he will sometimes growl at me or whatever. But I know he doesn't mean it. He's just a, he's just an old grump. Uh, and Swiffer, well... He just lies there um, when he's with me. He just lets him, he lets it happen. He's, but it's a big change because when he first got adopted, uh, she took him home and he was so smelly um, and she doesn't have the, what she knew I would have the right stuff to bathe a dog. And so she came over with the dog. I mean, fresh out of the dog shelter, right? He was really smelly. And he really was not cooperative. <laughs> so by now, he's really, really mellowed. And so that's, uh, that's great. Toulouse is the first city in France that has mandated masks everywhere, all through the city, both outdoor and indoor. And that's starting on Saturday. There were other cities that have done it in specific areas. But in Toulouse now, it's everywhere. We're having a predictable uptick in cases because a lot of people went on vacation and they're, they mixed with friends and family and a lot of them came home and they don't feel sick. You know, younger people, a lot of them don't even feel sick. It's terrible. And so they're transmitting without knowing and uh, the numbers are going up. Um, so masks are going to be mandated at private businesses as well, starting in September, anywhere there are cubicles and shared workspaces. So by the beginning of September, almost everybody in France will be wearing a mask all the time, unless they're home and working from home. Thank goodness <laughs> for me. I'm very lucky that way. Uh, but hopefully that means that by late September, we'll see the numbers go down again. Now, it's not like it's horrible, the numbers, but it's it's not good. You don't want to go up. You want to go down. Uh, I've been invited to a family birthday party, and I think I will skip it because we've, I, we've been super careful this whole time, not going anywhere. And it's really tough not going anywhere the whole summer. I'm really dying to, but... I don't, I don't want to blow it. So I'm not going to that birthday party. Uh, we'll party like it's 1999 <laughs> once there's a vaccine. Um, my daughter is still working till the end of the month, but, but then she, the next day she starts uh, on college uh, for her second year of master's degree. I have to hand it to her. She's, she's really a very hardworking kid. I think college will be in person, but with masks. So that, you know, that sounded really okay to me back in June or July when the, num the numbers were much lower than they are now. I'm not sure, I'm not so sure it's a good idea right now, but it, so far that's what we know. But she has her own studio and so she'll move back to her studio when she's going to school. We won't see as much of her, but we'll all be safe and uh, we'll see her sometimes uh, properly distanced, whatever. I hope you're staying safe as well. Try not to get too discouraged. I know it's really hard. Uh, I feel it too, but this too shall pass. If you enjoy the show, introduce a friend to the podcast and show them how to listen. Next week on the podcast, it'll be episode 300 with Elise, of course. And uh, it'll be, so we'll celebrate our, our uh, 300th episode. And we'll also talk about Castelnaudary, a place that I'm sure you have never heard of. But it's still really interesting. Well, maybe if you like cassoulet, you've heard of it. Hmm? How about that for a hint? <laughs> anyway, that's what we'll talk about next week. Send questions or comments or feedback to Annie at joinusinfrance.com. Thank you so much for listening. I know that there are a lot of podcasts out there and I appreciate you uh, listening to this one. Have a great week. Stay safe. And I'll talk to you next Sunday. Au revoir. 
The Join Us in France Travel Podcast is written and produced by Annie Sargent and copyright 2020 by Addicted to France. It is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. 